I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Hi everyone, it's Steph here and welcome to another kids book reading vlog. If you did not, if you missed my first one that I did in July, I think it came out in July. This is where I basically go through any recently acquired kids books that are not scheduled for specific reviews at any given point in time. And I read through all of them in, you know, I, I don't know, last time I did it in an afternoon. Today I'm actually just going to be reading a few things tonight, mostly picture books, because they'll be fairly quick to get through and um, my kids are desperate for me to bring them into school. They're very cranky with me because I've not brought any new books in. <laughs> They're very obsessed with new books. That might be my fault. But I did say that I had some new books, including some of the shortlisted titles for the CBCA Awards this year. And because Book Week is coming up, I need to read them and take them into school so I can read them with the kids. <laughs> so I need to get to them. And then I also have a couple of kids uh, fiction titles. So these are a little bit younger than middle grade titles, which I am very much looking forward to jumping into. I think I can do the picture books and those tonight because they won't take very long. And then I do have uh, some other books that I'm going to come back and film a second part to this video and then just clip it all together. So this is not going to be a one afternoon evening vlog. It is now like 8 p.m. and I'm going to try and get through as many as I can tonight. Whatever I don't get through, I'm going to get to in couple of days anyway so this vlog should so this I think this video it will come out gosh it's the end of July now so it'll probably come out early to mid August so there's a little bit of lag but uh, we're just gonna go with it and if you're interested this is the uh, stack that we're gonna try and do tonight good thing it's mostly picture books the first two that I'm gonna do are the rest of the CBCA books that I have not yet read when the waterhole dries up is a really gorgeous little story this is part of the early childhood shortlist and this one is about a little boy who is trying to have a bath he lives sort of in outback Australia and it's a very rhyming it repeats itself quite a bit and he's having a bath and all of these animals turn up into his bath and so he can't get in and a big mess is happening and you've got emus and quolls and thorny devils and dingoes and emus everything everyone's in this bath and then suddenly the animals are mucking around in the bath and then all the water tips out and the boy runs outside and it's raining in this very dry place and suddenly the water hole now has water and all the characters end up bathing in the end it's very fun very entertaining I know my kids will like this because they like stories that repeat so that they can join in with telling the story so I'm very very pleased to have read this now we're actually going to be doing an art and craft activity based on this book in the classroom during book week book number two was Amira's suitcase this is by Vicky Conley and illustrated by Nikki Johnston Johnston yeah Johnston anyway this is a really gorgeous very gentle story it is about Amira who finds a seed in a suitcase and she nurtures it until it grows and it is all about friendship and kindness and taking care of other things and other people it's absolutely beautiful well worth checking out and it's still shortlisted but it's also a notable book for 2022 which is amazing so these stickers for those of you who haven't seen them uh, the stickers for the CBCA books so that once they're shortlisted they end up being republished with the stickers on them not all of my copies of the books for this year have the stickers on them although I'm going to investigate ordering some stickers so I can add them to books just because it's easy for kids to identify these books as you know some of the best picture books from the last 12 months all right so I just read I Color Myself Different by Colin Kaepernick I think is how you might say it anyway it is a gorgeous book it is about a little boy who's at school and he has been adopted into his family and the class is asked to draw their family and he's so excited to draw them he loves his family and he draws them and when he stands up to share his work some of the kids ask why did you color yourself brown why are you different from everyone else in your family and so the character actually goes through the process of you know at first being taken aback that someone would ask that of him and then remembering that he asked his mother that and he was adopted into a white family and he asked her why he was different and there's this beautiful conversation in there between mother and child around being adopted and being special and being a, being part of the family that has made it complete and whole and it's so gorgeous and he is very proud of who he is and his family and I just it's such a gorgeous story and I'm really glad that it does talk about adoption and I think it's just an absolutely stunning book so well worth 
checking this one out if you haven't seen it. It's always a good day when I get to read a new Davina Bell book. So this is what to say when you don't know what to say. And it's actually not so much a story as it is a series of moments that kids might experience, like when someone's being mean to them, when their pet passes away, when they aren't brave enough to stay overnight at a sleepover, when they have an accident at school, when they need help. And each page is just an illustration of one of those moments that kids might experience and something that they can say to get help, to remind themselves that they're okay, that they don't have to do something that's hard or they don't have to be okay. It's honestly just super stunning. Davina Bell does the most gorgeous, child-centered, positive thinking books out there. I really love them and I'm very, very glad that I finally read this one and I can't wait to read this with the class because my kids go through quite a few of these things on a daily basis and sometimes we need a reminder of what to say when you don't know what to say and I think it's going to be a very timely reminder. I'm not sure who is familiar with the Very Cranky Bear series by Nick Bland, but this is The Very Sleepy Bear, which is another book in the series. In this one, the bear is about to hibernate and a fox comes along and tries to find the bear a big cave, claiming that the bear's current cave is too small for him. And so Bear reluctantly goes on this new house hunting trip with the fox and ends up in a cave on a beach uh, and ends up being woken up by a giant wave. So he's very unimpressed. So he goes back to his cave only to find that the fox and his friends have moved in to get out of the cold. And Bear says, that's fine, you can all stay here. But just keep in mind, I snore. Very funny and very cute. And my kids love these books. We have at school, the very cranky bear, the very itchy bear, the very hungry bear, the very Oh, sorry, the Super Bear. And I think there's one more that we have. I can't remember what it's called. So they will love this one because they love all of these books. All right, and my last four picture books are all by Scott Stewart. So same author, just different books by the same author. So My Shadow is Pink by Scott Stewart is an absolutely gorgeous book. It is about a young boy who has a pink shadow when everyone else in his family has blue shadows. So he's a little bit different. His shadow loves to wear dresses and he has a moment where he goes to school and they're told to dress the way that their shadow would dress. And he wears a dress to school and everyone sort of stops and stares and he gets really nervous and runs away. And he has this most gorgeous chat with his father who comes in in a dress and reminds him that everyone's shadow represents them. And you may not always see what it represents because they might present themselves in a different way, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a secret them inside of them and it's okay and you can share it or you can keep it to yourself, but just be proud of who you are. And that's the big message that comes through here that you need to be proud of yourself. So I've read this one. I'm now gonna read My Shadow Is Purple. I'm loving this. All right, so My Shadow Is Purple is another book that challenges gender stereotypes and it's absolutely gorgeous. Our main character ends up going to a school dance that has been divided into blue and pink and they get very upset by this because their shadow is not blue or pink, it's purple. And they decide that if they have to be, if they have to choose and they've been told to choose, then they'd rather leave. But then all of the other kids start revealing that actually, no, their shadows are not blue or pink or not just blue or pink. And it's a really beautiful, affirming story. So really well worth checking out this particular series by Scott Stewart. So I have two more of his books that I'm going to read. And the first one is How to, How to Be a Real Man. And I'm really looking forward to it. How to Be a Real Man is a really gorgeous story. So this was written by Scott Stewart for his son. And it challenges all the stereotypes that you have for men. So, you know, you have to be strong and you have to fight and you have to always be right. And this challenges that and says that actually, if you're gonna fight, you should be fighting for the rights of other people. And you show that you're strong by helping out and doing things to support other people. And it's just a really fun story. And I love the illustrations. They're so fun to look at and kids, will absolutely love them because there's so much going on in each picture and it's yeah just a gorgeous gorgeous style of story so i have one more picture book left and then we'll move into some of the novels so the final picture book is the very first you again by scott stewart and again this has that really beautiful illustrative style it's very cartoon like it's very bright and colorful and this is all about celebrating what makes every person unique and the fact that you are the very first you that has ever existed and the way that you think, the way that you feel, the way that you show love to others, the way that you explore the world and you create things is so different to anyone else and no one can ever replicate you. And it's just 
you know, one of those really truly gorgeous picture books that has a great message that kids can come back to time and time again. I really loved it. Actually, I actually need to figure out if we have this one at school and some of these other ones anyway, because these need to be in our library. Just read The Very Best Donut by Randa Abdel Fattah. This is a really gorgeous story. So this is part of the Our Stories series that I talked about earlier in the year. So they're really super short novels for younger readers and this one has a focus on a young boy who i think is in year three he and his family are muslim and they are celebrating ramadan and so he decides on this one friday the friday where he gets a donut in his lunchbox that he wants to try and fast and his family try to tell him he's too young he doesn't need to do it but he's determined to have a go and so he try he spends most of the day feeling very very hungry with a rumbling stomach and this prompts his teacher to invite him to share why he's fasting, the purpose behind it, which is fantastic. This is in really great language for young kids. And it really does celebrate culture and family and being proud of yourself and being proud of who you are. So really, really loved it. I do have another one of these stories. So I'm going to read it now. These are fantastic. I want to get sets of these for school. So this is another really great one. This is 29 Things You Didn't Know About Me by Solly Raphael. This is about a young boy called Franco who is in grade two and his family is originally from Mexico and they live in Australia now and he has just gone up into grade two. The grades are different so he's having to get to know and make new friends this year and so Lucas is over at his place and Lucas realizes he doesn't know much about Franco and so he says well what else don't I know about you and then Franco just goes off on a spiel of the 29 things that Lucas didn't know about him which he gets to the end and he realizes oh did I say too much and then suddenly Lucas starts in on all the things that he likes and this is really about friendship and about you know getting to know one another and what I really loved is at the back of the book they have the list of the 29 things about Franco and then there is space in the book for whoever owns the book to go and ask their friends 10 things or to tell them 10 things about them so that they get to know them as well so I really like that there's that interactive element in this book. I think I'm going to try and read one more book tonight and that is How to Make a Pet Monster Smidgen by Lily Wilkinson which comes out on the 2nd of August so this was a review copy and I'm very excited. I think we're going to read this and then that will be my reading for tonight. So How to Make a Pet Monster Smidgen by Lily Wilkinson is about a group of friends who have formed a monster club and they make little monsters. So, so far they have made Hod Hodgepodge and, oh my gosh, who's the first one? Flummox. So Hodgepodge and Flummox. And in this one, they're making Smidgen, who's a little dragon. And they have a recipe and of course, they manage to create this dragon egg that then ends up being mixed up in a set of eggs on a set for a reality baking show and chaos ensues. And of course, the reality baking show's theme is souffles. So <laughs> there's a lot of eggs. And in the end, the kids and the monsters have to create a massive distraction and try and get the egg back. This was fun. It was about friendship. The uh, One of the kids in the story is really nervous about starting a new school. And so having these other children who he's become friends with around him has really made a big difference because they all get along they say we'll take care of you when you're at school so that was a nice thread that was running through it and this one is definitely more middle grade it's sort of in readership age compared to the previous two that i read but it was fun and i loved the illustrations in it it's really cute yes i realize this is book three in a series so i haven't read the other two so we'll have to see if we have these at school and maybe pick those two up and get a bit of the backstory i will be back it'll be probably be a few days for me it'll probably be the next clip for you guys with some more middle grade titles that I have to read but for now I am going to do some tidying up around this place. Hi everyone I can't remember the last time I updated this reading blog and I don't know why this doesn't want to focus on me. Anyway I received a book in the mail today so I am going to be updating the vlog this weekend so this book will come in handy. This is from the Book Room Collective and it is Just One B which is the CBCA book that is out of print that no one can find anywhere and I found like the last copy anywhere which is important because I need it for Monday for a staff professional learning session so I'm very very happy that it arrived. It is one of the shortlisted books and as I said it's actually gone out of print and won't be reprinted until September despite the fact that book week is in like two and a half weeks but yes I've got it. This will probably end up going to school and the invoice will you know be paid back to me which is fine but I was just desperate to try and find a copy of it because we need it for the staff peel. My gosh. It was like a drama trying to find this book. Okay guys, so we are continuing with this kids reading vlog and I'm going to talk about Stelephant next. This is by James Foley. This is another CBCA shortlisted book this year. And 
I love this book so much. I read it to the kids on Friday and they utterly adored it. And I was just so excited to share it with them because this is about Stella who is an elephant and she applies to Space Command to be an astronaut. The guy at the applications desk basically says, uh, no, we don't have spacesuits for you. So no, you can't be an astronaut. So she goes off and she learns about the craft of making spacesuits and she designs a spacesuit for herself. And she comes back and she says, I've got the spacesuit, you know, can I apply? And they're like, no, you don't have the training and we don't have the facilities to train you. So she goes off, she studies, she learns, she trains, she comes back, I've got all these diplomas and qualifications and I've studied and I've trained and I'm ready to do this. And they're like, no, you won't fit in the space shuttle. So she goes off, she builds a space shuttle and then she co comes back and they're like, no, the astronauts won't fly with you because you're an elephant. And so she goes off and she finds a crew and she comes back. <laughs> and my favorite scene is they um, like the guy no longer has any answers. And he's like, I have to talk to my manager. And then the manager has to talk to their manager and so on and so forth. And they're finally in this room debating whether or not she can become an astronaut. And she realizes she doesn't need them and that she has everything she needs to go into space. She has done all of the work herself. She's put together a team and a crew and she has all the equipment. And so she launches Stellarphant Aerospace and she's the first elephant in space. And I loved it. And this, like, these are the end papers. So you have Space Command, which has all of the people who've been in space. I've got to find my favorite page because I just, I loved this, <laughs> this scene. All of the white men trying to make a decision and, you know, they can't. Then I loved this last page, which has so much information in it. So this is a true history of animals in space. And it's all of the animals who have been in space and what years they went in there as well as the first man and the first woman in space i was reading to the kids all of the animals who had been in space before and they were just like oh, what do you mean what do you mean these animals have been into space and they just couldn't believe it and i thought this would be such a great jumping off point for kids to learn about space history i mean space is very much wow space like you don't need a lot to sell it but for young kids the idea of animals in space like that's not something they hear a lot about now because people go into space and they were just like they've sent dogs into space wow and the excitement and the enthusiasm on their faces while we were reading that was just amazing all right and so the other picture book that i read is just one beast this is the book that arrived the other night this is by margaret lamond and anthony bertini and this is basically about how we look after our environment and climate change and all of that sort of thing so this is sort of a dystopian world where there are no more plants, no more flowers, and just one bee. But one bee finds another bee, and that other bee is very jaded, and one bee has found a flower. Then she realizes that there's a second flower, and that in order to rebuild her dream of flowers everywhere, she needs to take a risk and hope that she can pollinate the two flowers and work together with this other bee. So it is really all about the plight of the bees at the moment. There is two pages of information at the back of the book for students and for readers and it was just really glorious and I love these illustrations they are so stunning like even the back page so like you switch between the reality of the dystopian world and the utopia of the dream of everything regrowing and it was really really nice so I'm very excited that I have finally read this hi guys so it's later in the day and I'm about to start reading e-boy by Arne Do. this is issue volume Four. We're gonna see how this goes. I think I've mentioned in a couple of videos. I've not actually read this series by Ando before, so it'll be my first time diving into it. And then I'm hoping a little bit later tonight, I will also read The Very, Very Far North. I just finished E-Boy. It is actually called A New Gemini, but this is about Ethan, who is E-Boy, and he's a teenager who has somehow acquired the ability to be in direct contact with anything electrical E. In a lot of ways, he's like Magneto from the X-Men, including like a helmet, just like him. So if you like that sort of thing, this is probably right up your alley. And he and Dr. Pennycook are in the middle of trying to escape from a robot called Gemini. And Gemini was also created by Pennycook. What I can surmise is that he has been damaged at some point and he's in pursuit of them for the National Service Agency who desperately want to capture Penny and E-Boy. Gemini is damaged as a result of the escape. And so they are trying to piece him back together to see if they can reboot him as, you know, an ally rather than an enemy. And to do that, they have to get back into the National Service headquarters, which is very dangerous. And then they find out that they are in the process of constructing a second prototype, just like Gemini, called Aquarius, and that it is bigger and stronger than he is. 
and yeah this one's full of action and I did receive this as a copy from Alan and Unwin so thank you very much to them for sending it through it was very fun it was a page turner and I can see that kids would definitely like this okie dokie so I finished The Very Far North by Dan Barl. this one is also illustrated by Kelly Passett anyway it's a very cute story. The main character is Dwayne, he's a polar bear and he turns up in the very, very far north and he starts making friends and really cool. All the characters are illustrated on the back with their names so it does help to keep things easy to remember. And it's basically the story of how Dwayne meets all of these characters. Starting with Cece the Owl who lives on a shipwrecked boat. You have Magic A, Snow Fox, you have Handsome, a musk ox, there's Twitch the hare, Major Puff the puffin, Boo the caribou, who else did I forget? Oh, and Sun Girl and her pack of huskies. It was a very cute story and very whimsical and fun and you know just lovely. So I really enjoyed reading it and this has a gorgeous cover. Look at it, it's stunning. Okay so I found another picture book to read. This is Blue Flower, it is another shortlisted book. This one is by Sonia Hartnett. I may or may not have reviewed this already at some point but anyway I found it again so I'm including it because I have to take it into work because it's one of the books that we're using for a professional learning session this week. This, like I said, is a short list of book. It is about a young child who doesn't like going to school because they feel like they don't fit in, that they're different from everyone else and they don't run as fast as everyone else. They don't make people laugh. They're worried about getting things wrong. And this is about them realizing that it's okay to be different and it's okay to be them. And it doesn't matter that they're not exactly the same as everyone else. So it's a gorgeous story. I'm glad that I read this one. Hi everyone, it is Sunday afternoon. I spent the morning on a members only live show on Bree's channel with Izzy and Morgan and Brie and this afternoon I have been reading Enola Holmes and the Elegant Escape Escapade not Escape Escapade uh, it's the first Enola Holmes book that I have read this is by Nancy Springer I received this unsolicited from Alan and Unwin so thank you very much to them I enjoyed it it was an enjoyable historical middle grade adventure story with Enola trying to save a friend of hers from her dastardly father's uh, plot to a and trap her and then b marry her off to someone for money so it was really fun and enjoyable this one's probably another one i'll donate to the school library but i really enjoyed it i'm going to possibly read one more book for this vlog it will probably be this other ando book i've um put poster notes all over them the ones the book that i've been sent for review so that i remember which dates i need to review them by because otherwise i am forgetting a lot so i'm going to probably read that this afternoon and then i will wrap up this vlog and it will go up later this week i just finished rise of the mythics uh what do we say book five the last gladiator and the thing with all of these ando books and series is that they all pick up in the middle of action and they all end sort of on cliffhangers because you literally can read these books one after the other uh and you know it's designed for middle grade readers so it has to be full of action and all of that sort of stuff so the mythics are humans with abilities and enhancements you have the golden unicorn and a minotaur and all sorts and in this case there is the introduction of the character of the kraken and one of the mythics teammates jimmy has been kidnapped and transformed by the enemy and so they are trying to get him back and the only way to do that is to go and enter this gladiator competition and there they are able to free him so it was fun very fast paced very full of action and you know middle grade readers will definitely enjoy this series so i probably need to catch up on a couple of back issues just to catch up on the things that have happened already but that is the end of this particular kids at reading vlog i am going to have another one either right at the tail end of August or in the start of September because I have all of those books that are coming out on the 30th of August so I will probably try and group all of those together so that'll be about the next one that I do but yes I really enjoyed this so thank you for joining me and in the comments let me know if you have read any of the kids and middle grade titles that I've read and thank you very much to Alan and Unwin for the review copies as well I've had a lot of fun going through some of these books over the last couple of weeks so it's been great I hope that everyone is doing really well and I will see you in my next video thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.